All right, so today we're solving um, compound inequalities. Um, the first things that we're going to talk about are called conjunctions. Con, con means together with, together with, that prefix. Um, these are what we call intersections. Conjunctions are intersections. We use the word and to describe our intersections. That is going to be important in another couple le lessons. Okay, with the conjunction, that means that, that... All right, so we're talking about conjunctions. Um, here's an example of one inequality that x is greater than negative 2, and it says and less than 5. So I can write this in two different ways. x is greater than negative 2, and then I can write another one and x is less than 5, right? And so if I'm talking about the intersection, I'm really only looking at the area where they overlap. So that area in between those two open spots. Now there's an easier way to do this. First of all, when you see it written in words, we can write what's called an in-between statement. Okay? I can say the minimum boundary is negative 2, the top boundary is 5, and then we draw a line between them to show this is the area of intersection. Now, this is what we call an in-between statement. It shows the lower boundary, it shows the upper boundary, and your solutions are anywhere in between that. Okay? So the first thing we're going to do is practice writing in-between statements. So they're pretty easy. So all you have to do is take your numbers on the two inequalities, and I know this is an intersection because they use the word and. I want that to start becoming familiar to you. That's going to be important later on. Okay, I know, it's an in, I know it's an and. I know it's an intersection, so I take the lower boundary, negative 3. I take the upper boundary of my solution set, 5. I put x in the middle, and I put it always in order of the number line. So negative 3x, then 5, right? And it's showing that x is bigger than negative 3, so it means negative 3 is smaller than x, and x is smaller than 5. Pretty easy, right? Now, some students said to me, what happens if I do 5 is greater than x, which is greater than negative 3? Is this correct? Yes. Yeah. Well, by rights it is, but we never write it like this because it's not in order of the number line. So we always, you are never to write it like that, and if you do, you won't get credit. Okay? You must write it from least to greatest. Negative 3 is less than x, which is less than 5. And you're going to read it the same way. Negative 3 is less than x, which is less than, neg which is less than 5. Sorry. All right. Pause the recording and try number two and three on your own. Okay. What's going to look like? What's number two going to look like? So X is going to be in the middle. No, start from left to right. Okay, so four. Four then is, is, is less than X. Which is? Less than ten. Perfect. Perfectly said. Thank you. How do we do the next one? It's a little bit trickier. Um, Olivier? Negative 8. Good. Is less than x, which is less than negative 1. Perfect. Now, it's a little trickier because they set you up. We don't just do it with the first number that's listed. Right? We always take the smaller number and it goes to the left. Are there any questions? All right. So I would hope that you are able to use them. Now, I will still accept both. I don't care how you do it to me. You can keep the and statement, or you can write it as an in-between statement. But what you must know is how to read an in-between statement because you don't know how you're going to be given the information. Does that make sense? All right, so now we have an, a compound inequality. So we can solve this in two ways. I would hope you will want to solve it the fast way. But I'm going to show you the slow way first. Now, what does this really mean? It means negative 4 is less than x plus 3. It also means and x plus 3 is less than 7. So it's two inequalities in one. Okay? So 
I can use my properties of quality, subtract 3 on both sides. Negative 7 is less than x. Subtract 3 on both sides. Notice I'm doing the same thing. And I get x is less than 4. And then I can write it into an in-between statement. Negative 7 is less than x, which is less than 4. Does that make sense? Okay. Or, or I can just do all the math and do my properties of equality without splitting it. Subtract 3. I have to get x alone, so I've got to subtract 3 from all three sections. So I get negative 7 is less than x, which is less than 4. Which way is easier? Yeah. So, yes, I do want you to try and use that. Does that make sense? Okay. And then we can graph it. I need negative 7, I need 0, and I need 4. We're starting at negative 7, and I finish at 4, and I draw a line in between. And they're both open circles. Are there any questions? Okay. All right, so now they're going to get a little bit more complicated. What do we do first? How about Andy? Uh, first you, uh... We're solving for x, so that means x stays there. We want to peel everything else away. Subtract. We always undo our adding and subtracting first. It's easier. All three sides, and we get? Good. And now what are we going to do, Joy? So, uh, now you should divide, by three. divide all three sides by three. Now, the thing to remember is when I graph. When I graph. The solution set, where is my starting point? Xander. Um, the starting point would be um, negative three plus one. And Lucas in the back. Where's my ending point? One. What's the difference, Lucas, between my starting point and my ending point? No, I, I, not the literal difference um, about the starting points only. No. Connor? At negative 3, the starting point is open because it's only less than. Whereas at 1, tell me about this, the circle, Lucas. It's, close. it's a solid circle because it's equal to. So 1 is inclusive in that number set, whereas negative 3 is not. And I draw the line. Okay, questions? All right, moving on. All right, they're getting more more tricky. Sean, what do I do first? So you want to do the x alone, so you subtract 6 from all terms. Okay, we always undo our, our uh, addition and subtraction first. And then we get, Sean? Uh, negative 10 is less than or equal to negative x plus 4. Good. And so now, uh, Caleb. What would I do now? Am I isolated yet? Uh, no. You need to multiply by negative 1. Or multiply or divide. Or divide. Or negative 1, doesn't matter. And when I do that? You have to switch both sign, signs or, or just, just make it a little easier. Just switch the entire equation around. Because I'm really multiplying or dividing by an opposite sign. So if I'm taking the opposite there, I have to flip the inequality. Okay, so I'm multiplying or dividing by the opposite. Does that make sense? Am I allowed to write it like this? No. So what do I need to do? Go. Um, you need to put um, negative 2 first. Uh-huh, is? Is um, less than x. Which is? Less than 10. Perfect. 
okay? Less than or equal to. And then we have to graph it. We have to graph it. And we are open circle at negative 2. And what are we putting it at 10? Everybody? Thank you. And we draw the line. Are there any questions? Okay. Those are called conjunctions. Con means together with. So it's where they're both intersecting. Now we're going to talk about disjunctions. It's like disjointed, broken, right? To be broken apart. A disjunction, and we said a conjunction is an intersection. We said the word that describes it is and. We said it, it is not or. Okay, a conjunction, one more time, a conjunction is an and. A conjunction is where two lines overlap. It's where the sets overlap. They're intersecting. If I were talking about clubs, you have to be part of both clubs to be invited. A, a disjunction is a union. It's not an intersection. We use the word or to describe it. It is a union of both sets. Are you guys clear on that? Okay, so if I go and I start graphing this, it's saying all real numbers less than negative 2 or greater than 5. I've got, I have to write it with two inequalities. The or statements, we must write with two inequalities. There's no short way about doing that. So when I go to the line, you will see, because they are basically going in different directions. X is less than negative 2. So it's an open circle going in the less than direction, and x is greater than 5. Is that making sense to you? So unions, it means, now this would be something like if you're in the science club, you're invited, and if you're in the math club, or if you're in the math club, you're invited. Everybody's invited. You don't have to be in both clubs. Does that make sense? It's a union. All right, now I'm going to give you some notes that I want you to study before your quiz. You ready? All right, so first we're going to say there's intersections and there's unions. Okay? Intersection, we use the word and to describe it. Union, we use or to describe it. With an intersection, we use the horseshoe. With a union, we use a U. Okay? If I'm showing you with the Venn diagram, the only area that are solutions is the intersecting area, whereas the only area that are solutions is the entire area of both. You should be writing these because I asked you, you're going to study these for your notes. Okay? Is everybody almost done? Because I'm going to erase and I'm going to add more. These are called disjunctions. I mean, these are called conjunctions. And these are called disjunctions. Okay, these are on, on the graph. Oh, these can be written as an in-between. I can write it like x is less, no, is greater than 2. And x is less than 5. Or I can write it as an in-between statement. 2 is less than x, which is less than 5. On a number line, it's most of the time, not always, going to look like this. The disjunctions, you cannot shortcut it and write the in-between statement. You're going to say x is less than 2 or x is greater than 5. It's going to look like this.
Does that make sense? Okay, are there any questions? All right, so those are the notes. I really want you to study those before you go and take your quiz. Okay, now take a minute and solve these. Pause the recording. All right, so let's check our answers. So we always undo our adding and subtracting first. And then what you get, you just basically put on the number line. X is less than 5. X is less, greater than 10. Remember, we need three numbers on the number line, zero and your two other numbers. The thing I want you to pay attention to, one may be greater than or equal to, and the other is less than. Are you noticing that? They don't have to be the same. Remember, when we are dividing or multiplying by a, a negative, what do we need to do? We have to flip the inequality sign. Okay? Just solve them and graph them. Because this has an or statement, what kind of problem is this? It's a disjunction, and a disjunction is really a intersection or a union. A union, that's right. All right, so now let's look at some exceptions. We can do this. Um, remember last night they gave you a solution where W was the solution. We could use the set name. So let's do some set builder notation, and we're going to graph each of these and see which inequality best describes the situation they're asking for. So I'm going to graph both situations. Okay, one is x is less than, oops, x is less than 5. It's an open circle, and I'm going less than 5. And the other one is x is less than 3. Which of these two inequalities shows the intersection? One of the two inequalities shows the intersection. Oliver. X is less than 3. X is less than 3 can be used to describe because that is the only one that shows where it has the intersection. Does that make sense? And then I close it. Are you guys good with that? Yes. Gavin? Okay. So... Let's try the next one. It's a union. I'm going to put it on the number line. I'm going to graph both of them. Okay, x is less than 5 and x is less than 3. <coughs> Which of these two inequalities describes the union? Xander. X is less than 5. That's right, because it's either this or this can come to the party. So it would be x is less than 5. Okay? Next one. It says the word and. So is that an intersection or a union? <laughs> it's an intersection. Okay? So I'm going to draw the, the graph. And I'm going to graph both parts. x is less than 5. And x is greater than 3. What part is showing that, what part is showing the intersection, because it said and. Mary. What part between three and five? So how would I write it? X is uh, such that? X, uh, X is greater than three and less than five. How would you write that? Three, three is less than X, which is less than? Does that make sense? Yes or no? So I'm using that in between there. Okay, next one. Putting it on the number line. Okay, X is greater. Is this a union or an intersection? So we're looking for the one that kind of describes everything, right? Both of them. So x is less than 5, but x is greater than 3. Which of the two work? What do you guys think? What would you write? Yeah. X 
greater than, uh, less than five and greater than three. <coughs> nope. Yes. Because it's in union, we would just write the thing that's on top. The X is less than five. Okay, but what else? What numbers are included in this list of solutions? All real numbers. All real numbers. Any real number. Do you understand that? Because it's a union. It's everything here and everything here forever and ever. So that makes all real numbers. Does that make sense? Are part of the solution set. All right, let's try four more. Ready? Okay. Okay, so I'm going to graph these. I'm going x is greater than 5, x is less than 3, and they're looking for the intersection. What is the intersection? What would I use to describe it? Zach? Okay, it is an empty set. I'm going to leave it empty. There's nothing that intersects here. You guys with me? Okay, let's do the next one. Now, this is a union because it's an or statement. I'm saying here is x is greater than 5. X is less than 3. And the only way to write this is X is such that. Hello? How about this? X is greater than 5 or X is less than 3. There's no shortcut to write that. Because it's a union. It's all these, all these. It's everything excluding 3 through 5. Is this clear? Okay. Okay. Number, the fourth one is a conjunction or disjunction? Conjunction. Is it an intersection or union? Intersection. I'm going to draw it. X is greater than 5. We're looking for an intersection. X is greater than 3. Which of the two inequalities describes the intersection? Uh, Schweib? X is greater than 5. X is greater than 5. Are you getting it? Is it coming together? Okay. And last one? Okay. Where am I starting? X is greater than 5. And x is greater than 3. Is this a union or is this an intersection? Union. Which one best describes the union? Sabine. Yep. x is such that x is greater than 3. Is everybody understanding? All right. That's the end of the PowerPoint. If uh, Check Schoology for tonight's homework, which is page 408. Number 1 through 47 all. No worksheet tomorrow. I know, but I originally given homework for tomorrow.